This is the third part of recreating snake game using Unity Engine and Bolt. Bolt is a visual scripting tool, so we don't need to know anything about coding. Last time we have made the segments actually follow the head of the snake and also change the sprites of the segments and the head. And today we will add high score, score, the game over screen and all of that stuff so that we have a complete game. We will begin by quickly fixing the snake because when the snake eats an apple, you can see that the segment isn't changing the sprite. So we will just go to the head and to the script graph. Here in the part where we are moving, we first need to add the segment and then move. So it should be looking like that. And when we are not adding a segment, so this is false, we can just move. Now it's working just fine. Next thing we will add is the UI, so the game over screen and the score. So we can right click in the hierarchy, go under the UI and we can start by creating a text. We can use the text mesh pro. It just allows you to do some more fancy stuff with the text. It also might ask you to import the MP essentials. So we can just click the button and we can move it somewhere. We can make it smaller, change the color. And here we will just have the number, which will be the score. And we also might want to put the image of the apple next to that number. So we will add UI and add a image to which we can just put the sprite of the apple and put it to the source image like this. Also, when you are working with UI, it might look different on different devices. So we will select the canvas and under the canvas scaler, we will set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and we can set the resolution to just the full HD. So now it should try to make it look the same on all devices, which is quite nice. So now we have done the UI elements for the score, but it is still not going to do anything. We will need to do a bit of coding. So I will create a new visual scripting and script graph, which we will put for the canvas and we'll be using it for all of the user interface. So go to the canvas, add script machine and add the graph. Here we obviously want to know on which text we want to set the volume. So I will create a object variable, which will be for the score text. And the type of the variable is going to be text match pro UGUI, which is this one. And we can just drag the text. So on update, we want to be setting the text, so text mesh pro text set, and we can use this one. So on update, we will be setting text value of the score text. And because the score value is type integer and the text is obviously a string, we need to convert the integer to string, which is pretty simple. Just type integer to string and just convert it like this. It seems that we are using the wrong node for setting the text. So again, it should be this one and we'll try it again. Yep, now we are getting no errors. And when I go to the scene variables, I can change the score and you can see that it is correctly showing the score just by the number here. Next, we'll add the end screen. For this, I will create empty game object under the canvas because we want to be turning on and off the whole end screen so that we can just turn on or off this object. And under this end screen object, we will be putting all of the UI elements so we can add a button, which will be for restarting the game. We will also add another text for the high score. And we can add some background, so add a panel. And because we want to have the panel in the background, we need to move it up in the hierarchy like this. And now it is looking fine. I will create another object variable for the end screen. It's going to be type game object because we want to be turning on or off this whole game object. And we can do it on update. 
we can just set active and the game object and to which value we want to set it I will create a new scene variable which will be is game over the type is going to be bool and we can just set it to this value so when I set is game over to true you can see that it shows the end screen another thing that I will do is just freeze the game when the game is over this is going to be pretty simple so if it is game over we can just set the time scale that is going to affect all of the things that are happening in the game so set time scale and when it is true that it is game over we can turn it to zero and when it is false we can turn it to one which is the original volume and when we press the try again button we want to set the is game over to false so we can use on button click we will create a object variable for the button the type can be just game object put here the button so when we click the restart button we can just set the is game over to false yep now the snake is no longer moving and when i press try again yes we are moving now we can add the high score which is pretty simple we can just create a saved variable which is obviously going to save and this is going to be the high score the type is going to be integer and its initial value we will set it to zero and on update we want to be checking if the score is greater than the high score if this is true we will set the high score to score So it should look like this and because the high score is the save variable we don't have to do anything else we just need to display the high score so we can copy this part with setting of the text it is going to be the same we will just be setting different text object so we can try eating some apple and when i set this game over to true you can see that it is telling us the high score but it is not saying that the high score is something it is only telling us the number so what we can do is we can connect a string to the high score value so we will use concat and we can use this one with two strings and the first string can be just high score and the second string which will connect to this is going to be the volume so that it looks better yep and now it is telling us that the high score is one just a quick reminder that i can also teach you individually anything about unity bolt or c sharp because i just can't fit all of the information into these videos or i can also help you with your personal projects or with the features you are trying to implement so feel free to reach out to me and we can have an individual lesson one hour lesson costs 10 euros and is on Google Meet. One thing that is still missing is that when even the snake goes through itself, it's not going to set the is game over to true and we can easily fix that. So I will go to the head script and here when we are detecting the collision, so when it is not the tag of Apple, we can just compare it with some other tag. The name will be wall because either when the snake collides with the border of the map or with some of the segments, it is going to just set the is game over to true. So when it is the tag wall, we can just set is game over. Don't forget to add the tag wall and add it to the snake segment and also add some walls. This should be good enough for now next thing we'll add is under the canvas because when we restart the game 
We also need to reset the score, reset this next position, delete some of these segments and all of that stuff. So we'll do that when we press the button restart. We can obviously set the is game over to true. Then we can set score to zero. We can also reset the position of the head and the first segment of the snake. So I will create object variable which will be the snake parent. This one can be just transformed because I will need to get the children from this game object. So I will get child and the first is going to be on index zero of the snake parent. We can set the position and set the position of the first segment, which is on the index one and the position is zero, minus one and zero. And we can also reset the direction of the head. So we need to get the game object from this transform that we are getting here. So transform game object. And we want to set the object variable. One of them is the direction and second one is the new direction. So it should look like this. And we also want to delete the segments. So if the snake has more than just the head and the first segment, we want to delete all of them. We can do this using for loop. The first index is obviously going to be two because this one is on the index zero, this one is one, and we want to start with the second segment. So the first is two and the last is just the count minus one. So get the child count of the snake, subtract one from it. And this is going to be the last one. And to the body of this loop, we can just destroy game object. And we need to get the child on that index. So get child on this index from the snake parent, then get game object from it and destroy it. This whole part should look like this. So now when the head of the snake collides either with the segment, like this, it should, oops, this is not supposed to happen. We need to also set the colliders on the segments to its trigger. So just select the prefab and set it to its trigger and it should all be working. And if you edit these borders of the map, also don't forget to add is trigger colliders to them. Yeah, this is better. You can see the end screen, the high score, and we can try again and it should reset the snake. It seems that we have one more segment, so we can go back to the canvas and just delete the subtract node for the for loop. Now we can make random spawning for the apples. So when the snake eats the apple, it will disappear and appear on another position. For this, I will create new script graph, which we will put to the apple. And I will leave just one apple in the game. Add the script machine and add the script graph. In the head script, instead of destroying the apple, which is happening here, we just want to trigger a custom event on the apple, which will tell it to move. So trigger custom event, it is on the apple game object and we can call it move apple. In the apple script, we will create the custom event, which we call move apple. And when this happens, we just want to set position and we want to get a random position. So we can just use random that range, this one, which is with the float and we'll just measure where the apple can be spawned. So on the X, it is minus 10 and 10. And on the Y, it is minus four and four. So generate number from minus 10 to 10 and from minus four to four. Then we'll create new vector free with the volumes like this. This one is X, this one is Y, and Z can be on zero. We will set it to this position. But you also want to set the random position on start. 
And also when the apple somehow gets spawned to the snake, we also want to move it somewhere else. So we can use the on trigger enter. When this object, the apple, collides with the wall, which is the snake segment, so we can use compare tag. And when it is the wall, when this is true, then we can just reset the position again. So now we have just one apple on the map, and when we eat it, it should appear somewhere else. Yep, just like that. And the last thing that we will do today is the grid with the grid generation. So I will create just a basic 2D object and the square. It is going to be kind of green, but I'm not going to be placing them all just by my hand. This would be a lot of work. Instead, I will create a script, which will be for the grid generation. We can just put it on some empty object. We'll create two variables for the number of rows and columns so that we can easily set it. From this one square, I will just make a prefab so that we can later spawn it to the game and we can get to the coding. So we'll start on start and we can use just for loop and we'll be using two for loops. One of them is going to be going through all of the rows and second one through all of the columns. So we can just connect the number of rows. We can set it to something like nine and the columns to something like 15. So the rows is going to be the last number and the another for loop from the body will connect it to the for loop and take the columns as the last number. We will be creating a new vector two from these two values. So the X is for the columns and the Y is for the rows like this. Then we can just instantiate, instantiate the game object. We can use this one. So it will be on this position. The original is just the square. The parent, we can leave it on this, which will get us the current game object from which we can just get the transform. And the rotation will just create new quaternion, which is like an empty rotation. And this is going to be happening on the body of this loop. And we can see that many squares spawned into the game, they are starting from the position zero. So we will probably move the camera to the top right. And we also need to do something with the colors because we want to have one color light and another one dark. So just move the camera so that the corner is on the zero zero like this and also move the borders with the snake. Now for the color changing, I will create a graph variable, which is going to be is dark. If it should be dark or not, it is going to be bool. And every time it runs through the loop, we will set the is dark to its opposite value. So set is dark and we will set it to is dark and just negate it just like that and do the same thing with the columns loop like that. When we instantiate the game object, we need to get the sprite render from it and then we can set the color. So this is the game object. So we will do get component. We can use this one and the type will be the sprite renderer. And we can just set the color of the sprite renderer. So of this renderer, after we instantiate it, and I forgot that we need to set the is dark after we set the color, so it should be like this. So we first set the color. Here we can use useful note select. So when the is dark is true, it is going to be some color. So I will just do color lighter. And here we can choose the color from when it is dark. And when it is light, we can choose another color and just put the output to the color that we are setting it to. Yeah, now it is starting to look like something. We just need to modify these numbers. So the first one can be odd and the second one not. 
So let's try it with the 9 and 16. Yeah, and this seems to be looking like a pretty nice grid. We can obviously make it bigger. Yep, this looks nice. If you have problems with the rendering of the snake, it is probably because you just need to set the order in layer to something greater because we are also spawning the grid in. So set it like this. Set the position of the snake to something like this. And now it should be fully working. And we'll do the same thing for the apple. So we just change the order in layer to something higher. Cool, now we have a fully functional game. So, as you can see, we are moving on the grid. We can eat the apples, it will make the snake bigger. And when we crash either to the wall or to the snake itself, it is going to reset and tell us the high score that we got. Yep, we have high score of 3. We can try again. And we are going. You might want to change the starting position of the snake and so on. But overall, I think this is a pretty good starting project for everyone who wants to learn to develop basic 2D games. I hope that this series was useful to you. If you have any questions or series that you would want me to make, tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!